take and remove that. Clean out that groove real well. Yeah, like I said, matter of preference, but I use a uh, Indian head slot compound. It's got a pretty quick drying time, and I only put on a small film. Use a little bit of grease to retain that in place for me. Oh, yeah. Use that brittle, to say the least. Alright, so next, as you've seen, I got the gasket reinstalled on the back. The o rings retained in, like so. Everything's mocked up pretty well here. We're gonna take it. Install the water pump. Nice to lube up everything, makes it slide together. That much easier. And your three longer bolts. One more than the everything's pushing flush, so I believe we got it. So I'm just gonna take in a just run them down, just so they touch. Okay, so our water pump to cylinder block is 78 inch pounds. Water pump to cover 78 inch pounds. Alright, so I'm just going to go over them one more time. One. Just going to go around a circle. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Six. That's 78 inch pounds. I'm just going to snug this one down as well. Put the bracket back on it. That way everything's compressed right around the same. Now we can jump to the back and we get our reinstall our tubing and our hose. I would tighten these right down to about the same. I'm just torque them down to 78. That fan's going in the background. It's going to be a little annoying but it is very hot in the shop today. So to cooler I stay, the more focused I am, and the better video I can give you guys. Okay guys, so what I'm going to do next is remove the valve cover gasket, or the valve cover, to because i got to replace that valve cover gasket, right? We talked about this earlier. Really don't need to be covering this in this video. It's pretty straightforward, simple. We're going to pull all the spark plug wires off. And there's a center bolt on each one. Come up here. Can you see that? It's like a nut looking thing. We're going to remove all four of them. And then the valve cover is going to come off. 
I know I said I wasn't going to cover this with you guys, but I got to admit, it's pretty boring when, when you're not hanging out with me, so I'm going to start covering a lot more. But as you can see with this, it's just so brittle and dry. It's supposed to be a lot softer than that. So we're going to take and uh, just clean this up a little bit. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to replace that cam seal while we have the valve cover off where you would see a dual overhead cam normally would have two cam sprockets they uh, on this engine they chose to pretty much time them together with two gears on the inside under the cover so it is a dual overhead cam with one sprocket alright new cam seal we're going to take the one cam journal off 10 millimeter Simply loosen it. And in this position, you'll see all the journals we have. There's one more journal here. As you can see, the little bit of can isn't compressed. This engine looks relatively, actually, it looks really clean on the inside. I'm going to take these bolts out. Once we get, there you go. There's two dowel pins in there. You want to keep this thing spotless. At that point you can slide the seal right off. The crank isn't showing any signs of leaking at this point. And I I threw it out there as an option. However, we're going to do everything we can with the parts that were available today. We're going to get this thing done to the best of our ability. And that's what he wants to go with. So. I want to take some brake cleaner and just spray that right there a little bit. It'll help dissolve. Whatever it is. Well, you guys know how I am. Unfortunately, I am not going to be happy just leaving that like that. Okay guys, I put some assembly lube on the new seal. This should make it easier for it to slide on. You gotta be careful. See how I spun that on there a little bit? Kind of weird, right? But the way that seal slides over that shaft, it wants to fold it outwards. Some people might be saying, well, why aren't you putting anything on, on the outside of that seal? I don't know, you could. Let me just push everything in until it bottoms out, right? Yeah, that's it, it's a little bit, but... It's all in right there. see what the torque spec is on that. All right, 14 inch pounds, or 14 foot pounds, 168 inch pounds. Okay. Good. All right guys, I'm just gonna flush everything down with brake cleaner from up here and just spray everything down. I'm waiting for Tame to get back with the gas. I want to keep everything moving in the right direction. Oh, 
let that evaporate out. That's the final rinse. Time to show you. That's what a gasket's supposed to feel like. Power cover's all clean. Just putting everything back together, dry. One thing I do do, do do. <laughs> I just said do do. <laughs> you did. I'm gonna put a little bit of silicone, a little bit of uh, right stuff in a corner of each journal. A little bit of silicone I put in each corner. It's called the right stuff. I think Permatex makes it. Quick Karen. All right, gasket's on. Make sure nothing gets knocked out of place. That would suck. Nothing. Alright. I'm gonna put these gaskets on. One at a time. Unless you know a better way. Now these nuts. These nuts. Just gonna put the spark plug back in on here. That way that's added away. Also before I start putting the timing components on, after I put the water pump and stuff on, everything is seated and set and ready to go. I gotta find a short piece of hose to fix this one breather. It was very brittle. I'll get to that off camera. Wow. Started filling with antifreeze. As you can see, it's a little over full at this point. I'm trying to get it to burp down for me. It's burping down slowly. Just topping off for any freeze. That way, while we're working, if we see any leaks, we know we're in trouble. <laughs> Next, we're going to take and install this lower idler. Click, click, torque the spec. Next, I got this cover all cleaned up. Okay, just like so. Then we install the three retaining bolts. Next, we install a new tensioner, like so. Put a bolt through. And start it. We're just going to run it down a little bit so it's just touching, just prior to snug, so we can move it like so. Okay, the reference mark on the Baron cap. I put some yellow paint in it, make it a little easier to see. All right, now let's install the cam sprocket. Got it all cleaned up. As you can see, we turned it a little bit when we were prepping the camshaft for the new seal. And I only want to rotate it in a clockwise rotation. So once I get this on there, we could uh, we could turn it and line up that time and mark. I'm just gonna turn this around. We're getting close to our, our mark, so I'm not going to turn it any further at this point. But I am going to tighten this down. Click. What I found is one of these pink crimp, wire crimp connectors, barrel connectors, whatever you want to call it. Fits that bore almost perfect. That'll give me a nice straight. It's very hard and deceiving to look through a hole at that angle and tell if you're straight. All right, so I can look back there. I don't know if Tana can zoom in or not. All right, hold up. See that yellow mark back there? Yeah. I'm a little bit before it, so I gotta turn the cam just a tad. To me, that feels perfect and looks perfect. I'm gonna get a mirror. Can you see the yellow mark in the yes, mirror? You can. can you? Okay. As you see, we're dead center of the hole. Yeah. You see it good? Yeah. First tension, I'm gonna put the spring on for a moment. I 
Right. I'm going to push it down as far as I can until it hits the lock. And we're going to snug it up. So we're going to take and push it down all the way. Snug it in place. It's going to be hard to see this, but if you look up from the keyway, you see there's a little indent right there. That's your time mark. You see that little dimple right there? Can you see it? That little aluminum dimple? Yep. That one? That's the opposing mark. I want you guys to be able to see it. So as you can see, I gotta turn the crank. If you want to make life easier on you and actually do it by the book, you really should remove all the spark plugs. So I'm gonna slide the balancer on just a little bit. And we're gonna take it. So this was the camshaft, as you've seen that little hole we were looking through. Okay. And then the crankshaft. I just used the key as a reference to find it. But we put it right between. Yeah. That's what I come up with. Everything else has been good. I'm going to show you something I didn't like once we're all done. Alright, now we're going to lower it down. We're going to wrap the belt. So you can see the, the wrapping of the belt. Okay, so now we got our new timing belt. As you see, everything's prepped. You see everything's looking pretty. I think it's safe to install the belt. There you go. I want to get all the slack onto this side of that tensioner. Okay? I'm going to loosen it slow so it pops up slowly. There Alright, so I just loosened this up. The belt is still in place, spring pressure on it. I just want to show you how much spring pressure is still remaining, or how much of the notch is still remaining. Notch is left underneath the bolt. Mm -hmm. You see it? Yeah. All right, good. So we don't want to tighten this yet because we want this spring pressure on that bolt. And you don't want to push on the top side of this belt yet. So it snugs up with our fingers and loosen it up a little bit because you want it so you can push down and like that. All right. Now we're going to raise the vehicle and we're going to turn the crank two full revolutions by hand. Check the top time and mark. Right now they're good. We're gonna check the bottom one while we go down there. See the other mark? Okay. That one's still good. There's this thing right here. I know it's not gonna be perfect, but it's a lot easier to see that than it is the other mark. Okay, if you come down here and you take a look at the time mark, you can see we're still lined up here. If you were off a tooth either way, it'd be in the next cog. You know what I mean? Okay, so what this is going to do for us, it's going to take and pull all the slack off of the, tent, the tight side 
of this side. It's going to pull all the slack out of the belt and put all the slack onto the tensioner side. And that spring is going to keep on pulling up, pulling the tension off of that belt. So clockwise, two rotations. For video, I added a spacer to that. One third. Bam. Two turns. Let's check the time mark. Okay, I could take you and give you the mirror. However, I gave you that quick reference mark. And we're right on the money. So we know that other mark is lined up as well. So now it wants us to take it to 45 degrees before top dead center, off the timing marks, on the cover. We're going to see around where that is. There's another mark next to the mark that we lined up. And it wants us to turn it to that mark, but it's not showing it here. However, if we look at the timing cover, I have it here. You see this is 15, they want us to go to 45. So it'll be like right around this area. Right there, actually, see that? Okay, that would be at the 45 degrees. Now with that, the spring pressure has the correct amount of tension on it. Knock it down. And now we're all locked in place. That's all there is to it. 31 foot pounds. Same thing with another check that one here. Next we're gonna can't forget this washer because that's kind of what keeps this timing belt from walking off. So we're gonna put that on there like so. Everything's looking good, still nice and dry. Timing covers are going back up. I had to replace the seals on this one. Hopefully you won't have to do the same thing with yours. Just getting all the timing cover bolts in and situated. Good. 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 Abracadabra. Waiting for my air compressor to build up. I just wanted to give you an idea of what to expect. The, the exhaust is shot on it. But it's not here for this. Um, I'm going to give him a quote on fixing it. This is a real pain in the butt, you know? Still that main bracket. Classic just I got it started. This one I'm going to leave loose for now. However, I can install the alternator. It's a ground. I don't want to forget about it. All of our lights went dead. However, I'm just going to put that last bolt into that bracket. You're not going to be able to see what I'm doing anyway. But we're going to get them in. It's dark up in there, but them two right there. I'm going to get them tight, and then we could uh, finish doing what we were doing up top. While we're down here, I just threw the power steering belt on. That's where I set that. I don't want to go too much over tighten. 
Gotta have faith. Yeah, you gotta have faith. Alternator AC belt. It feels good to me. I think that's where I'll leave it. That one. I was getting at before when I was filling this up with antifreeze I didn't have the camera rolling and I wish I did but as I was filling it I was squeezing this hose and as I squeezed the hose I felt like a marble or something in there it felt felt odd like, what the heck's going on and when I took the radiator cap off I'm like oh wow this thing fell apart and then I started thinking I'm like damn I wonder what that is so I Sucked a little bit out and I pulled, we pulled the upper hose off. And if you come over here on the toolbox, this piece was in the upper hose, right? The spring somehow later on ended up right at the filler neck, like right where they wanted me to grab a hold of it. Like for some reason, something had me grab that hose, feel this piece inside that hose, open up the hose and take it out because I wasn't sure what it was. And then I looked down in the filler neck, shortly later, I know it wasn't there before, and there's that spring sitting at the bottom, like it just washed up, I wanted to jump out. So I think we found every piece, if I had to guess, of that radiator cat. What would have happened if I didn't find that? Would it end up in a water pump? Potentially lock it up, damage something. Would it just get caught in a radiator? Somehow, well I know how, that piece just floated down while I was squeezing it. It must have came apart when we took the radiator cap off. Yeah. And then uh, when I was squeezing it, it sucked it down and I pinched it and it was right there. But I wonder if it would have went down and ended up in that freaking water pump. I don't know, there's a good chance. That was close. Way too close for comfort. Way too close for comfort. That's exactly what I was doing. And all of a sudden I went to and felt that piece. I'll top this off while I'm here. I have that mixed 50-50 already. So here we go, this is going to be the first attempt to start it since it got towed in. I'm going to hold this wide open. Ready? Go ahead, crank it. Ready? Press start. I got the exhaust pipe hooked up to it, but I, I believe. 
David was just so overwhelmed from trying to start it so much that it uh, had itself flooded all out. It's clear enough. Thank God. Um, my exhaust management, I got hoses out. But I don't want to leave it running in the shop too much when it's smoking like this. Because of that exhaust leak, I'm not getting all the exhaust down. Now it's cold. It's cold. I'd be a little worried. I've had no starts, but that scared me. I'm going to turn the exhaust fan up. I got to take a little video with my phone for the customer. I just turned the big exhaust fan on in the back. There's actually a lot of ventilation in this shop that you really don't see. I got the exhaust fan behind me. In addition, inside the paint booth, there's a, a downdraft grate in the floor. And right here's all my windows. I just turned that on, so it's gonna help suck it out that way. Plus it's gonna suck it out the back. Plus I have the hoses out the back. And as you've seen already, as soon as I kicked all that on, it, it dissipated that exhaust pretty well. We're gonna let this run get up to operating temperature. I believe he probably sat on the side of the road trying to start and start and start and start, start waiting for the tow truck. It's gonna definitely end up throwing a code eventually for the downstream O2 sensor is gonna say inefficient cat because that exhaust leak is right before, it's right after the cat but before the oxygen sensor. So it's gonna, it's gonna mess with that reading even if it does have a good cat on it, but I highly doubt it. Because with that exhaust leak, the way it is, it shouldn't be this quiet. And I should, I can just tell it's, it's starting to pop. But I'll, I'll tell him straight up that I can't troubleshoot that, that code until the exhaust is fixed. Phyllis. Okay guys, it's a brand new day. We picked up a radiator cap this morning. It's still topped off. Might be able to put a smidge. It's a special cap, you know what I mean? It's well it's not special, it's unique for this radiator and many others I'm certain but all the caps I had on hand didn't fit this neck. This is going to be a cold start. First time this morning. See how it starts out. Alright, go ahead. Sir. Damn thing's so noisy though. Actually, hang on a second. Just for the viewers, I'm going to I'll turn the exhaust fan on after it starts. Go ahead. Of course we know there's a major exhaust leak. See, it's almost up to operating temperature. I shouldn't say he doesn't want to fix it. He just doesn't have the, the means, the funds to fix it at this point. And, uh,
hard to talk over that noisy exhaust, right? But at least you can hear it. Yeah. Runs good. Everything we did is good, <laughs> I should say. Man, it probably goes right through that microphone like crazy. He's kind of getting himself a ticket that costs more than the repair. That's all right, bud. No worries. <laughs> something once upon a time stuff like that always intrigues me I'm not sure what it is but uh, I would like to get more on my I have another channel it's called Seymour Willie and uh, <laughs> the kids came up with it but on on my off time I like to like to go to places that are similar to this like if you go ahead up here this was something at one time. I'm not sure what it is. People still use it as uh, like a recreational uh, picnic or a little hiking or biking action. But it was a camp or something at one, one time. It had to be. Now we actually took a few people out here today. But as you can see, it's all grown over. You got this nice parking lot over here that's just for visitors. <laughs> But maybe I'll give a tour of this stuff one day on my other channel. Do you know where your wife's at today? No. <laughs> That's bad. Why do I think like that? I don't know. Why do you think like that? Because no. there was two cars parked there. <laughs> and it's a very odd location. <laughs> I heard this exhaust when <laughs> 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 running with your pants down. Uh. <laughs> tell you, he fixes the exhaust on his car, it rides pretty good. Yeah. I'm gonna tell him, fix the exhaust, get it done, enjoy yourself. You can't enjoy yourself driving this thing. Not like this. Give me a couple bucks, I'll weld the thing together for you. <laughs> okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's, uh, it was pretty straightforward mechanical repair. A little bit of troubleshooting involved. We heard that it sounded like, like I said that lawnmower that didn't have a spark plug in it. it just wing, wing, you know. Spin it over way too fast. How'd that go again? Wing, wing. Wing, wing. But uh, then we put that spark plug back in there and you feel that. Boom, 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 boom. That's essentially what this thing was doing. However, instead of the spark plugs being out, the valves were open, allowing the exhaust or the compression to go right out the exhaust or out the intake. So I'll catch you guys next time. So there's going to be plenty more repairs coming in that I'd love to share with you. I appreciate all the support, the feedback. Pulling fan just kicked out. I was kind of waiting for that. Going time. That's a good sign. That means everything is actually.
we have the operating temperature for the first time with the hood open. You guys can hear and see it. Uh, it just kicked back on. Anyways, I truly do appreciate all the support over the years. I've been doing this for gosh, well over five years. I think it's going on seven, may even be seven plus. I have to take a look back. But this YouTube thing isn't nothing new to me. It's just I, I wasn't really investing the time that I should have. And I, I apologize to all you longtime viewers. But for all the new ones as well, I'm back and I'm hoping to be better than ever. Thanks guys, I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, stay tuned.